All right, guys, so in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to request the API key from OpenAI, as well as how to test to make sure that that API key is actually active. If you watched the previous video, you were able to set up your environment to get started with working with Core AI. If you're interested in working with this framework or this tool, I suggest you go back and watch this video. I'm going to leave the link below. Today, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, I know requesting an API key may seem quite simple, but again, I'm doing this tutorial so that anybody that's a beginner, it doesn't matter if you've done this before or not, you'll have a very clear cut way of understanding how to do this on your own. And yes, my intention is to basically hold your hand through this. The reason being that I think a lot of people watch these tutorials, but because of some of the more tedious steps or maybe some of the things that might seem a little bit ambiguous in the tutorials, people decide just to not do the project altogether. So my goal here is to basically show you step by step how to do every little thing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to OpenAI and request our API key. We can do this by just Googling OpenAI. API key. Uh, first link is going to take you to the OpenAI page and just go to sign up. And here you're going to enter your email. As you log in, you're going to be able to set up your profile here. So just put your name and your organization name. You don't really have to do that and just agree. And this is what the OpenAI page, the platform page for them, where you can kind of like start messing with getting the API key stuff is going to look like. Now, there are going to be a couple things you're going to have to do before you can use the API keys. So if you click this left menu, you'll see this option says API keys. Here, you'll be able to start generating your API keys, but first you have to verify your phone number. Now, once you verify your phone number, you are going to get a page like this. And this is where you're going to be able to create all of your keys. And all you have to do is go to create new. You're going to set the permissions you want. Usually, you're just going to leave it in all. And then you'll be able to generate a new key. The other thing that's going to be really important for you to be able to set up these API keys is you're going to have to set up your billing. So for that, you're going to go to settings and then click billing. Now, as you can see here, I have a credit balance of $10. So what that means is that I pay $10 at a time. That way, any API calls that are made will just be charged to those $10 that I prepaid ahead of time. So if you've never worked with APIs, basically what an API does is it gives you permission to use the technology of the application, the company that you're working with. And really, they're just going to charge you a little bit of money for any time you use their services. So if you have a ChatGPT account, every time you make a request, every time you know you ask it something, those are API calls you're making, but you're doing it with their user interface. Now, you could make your own custom application and do what's called have ChatGPT on the back end, right? Which is kind of like how Crew AI works. Because you are using OpenAI's technology for your application, you're going to pay a little bit of money so that you have that privilege. Now, it doesn't cost a lot. It's only going to cost you a few cents when we use a Crew AI application. But that's the reason why it's super important that you keep your API key secret. Because if you saved your credit card to the account and you gave your API key away to someone, they're going to run up that bill real quick. So we set up our account on OpenAI's platform. We verified our phone number. We added some credit to our balance so that we can make API calls. And now we want to make sure that our API keys are actually working. So you're going to go back to API keys. So now that you set up your API key and set up your billing, we're going to go ahead and test out your key. So you're going to go to documentation down here. From here, you're going to click where it says API reference at the top. And here you're going to get a brief overview on how you can use the API keys for OpenAI. So the main thing we're going to do is we're going to check the authorization. So just to make sure that whenever you make a request, your key is actually working. And this here shows you a short example of how you can make that check. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So on VS Code, we're going to do this on your command prompt. I'm going to copy this command. And here, again, after authorization bearer, is where you're going to type in your API key. I'm just going to block that out because at the end of the day, you're just going to use your own key and this key isn't going to be available anymore. And when you run this, if you hadn't set up your billing or if you mistyped the API key or there's an extra space, you're going to get an error like this. So this error tells you that it's an invalid API key. So after you check to make sure that you type the key right, to make sure that you set up the billing correctly, you can try again with a different API key. And if you are using a valid API key, you're going to get a way longer response that basically tells you what's available for you to use. Here you can just see that it's just the names of all the models for ChatGPT. So that's it for today, guys. Just a very quick overview on how to get your API key, how to set it up on your account, and how to test it out to make sure that it's a working key. On the next video, we're going to go through how we're going to actually set this up in our project. I just want to make sure that this was covered because I feel like when people watch some of these tutorials, they don't actually do them themselves because they skip some of these parts that might seem like a little bit time consuming, a little bit tedious, or just overall kind of boring. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.